Hello and welcome. In the previous episode, we discussed container networking in detail. If you haven't watched it, I provided a link below, so make sure you watch that because you get a lot more out of this if you are familiar with how container networking um, works. And in this episode, we will build on, on that and we will explore the pod network networking. Here's the agenda for this video. We will cover high-level overview of Kubernetes network mo networking model, Kubernetes pod networking overview, and container networking interface, or CNI. And finally, we take a close look at Flannel CNI uh, network provider. So let's take a look at Kubernetes network overview. Kubernetes imposes some networking rules, and those rules are, first, all pods can communicate with each other on all nodes. Second, agents on a node can communicate with all pods on that node. The agents really means Kubernetes services. So what it means is all the Kubernetes services on a node can communicate with all the pods on that particular node. And the last one, no network address translation. What it really means is each pod gets it, uh, its IP address. And so that's I, that IP address is being used to address that particular um, pod, either from other pods or from other services. So the rationale for network rules are really simplicity to hide implementation details and service discovery. There are three types of network uh, in Kubernetes. First, let's have a network and attach a Kubernetes cluster to it. Each node has, will have its own IP address, as you can see here, that is really drawn from the network, either through DHCP or more commonly through uh, static IP addresses. So these nodes can communicate freely with, with each other and also can use the resources, digital resources on the same network. So that is, uh, defines our net, uh, node network. Next is pod network. So as you can see, we can have multiple pods um, on various nodes. And very importantly, each pod, as we mentioned up here, each pod is its own IP address. So these pods are addressable from anywhere um, on the cluster. These IP addresses are either retrieved from the network or more commonly, they are uh, retrieved from the range of IP addresses called um, IP CIDR range. So when we use Kubernetes um, CNI, um, Container Network Interface uh, providers that we will talk about shortly, they have, they usually have um, a pool of IP addresses that are used to um, assign IP address for the pods. The last but then not the least is a cluster network. The cluster network is used by services. So all the services uh, use this network. And the IP address on this network is allocated from a range of uh, IPs specified in Salesforce in service uh, cluster IP address range parameter, which is part of the I, uh, API server and control manager configuration. So by default, it has a, um, a range of IPs that uh, can be used. Um, has a default range, but we can also define our own range if needed. So that defines um, kind of overview of Kubernetes networking um, as we go along. Now let's take a look at how pods communicate with each other. Let's say we have a Kubernetes node. So we have a node here, it has an IP address, and then we create a pod on that node. It, this pod has two containers within it. So if there are more than one container, and that is possible because it can have more than one container in a node, uh, on a pod, if that's the case, then these two containers share a single IP address. So uh, each container doesn't have its own IP address. They both share the same IP address, and that IP address would be the IP address of the pod. 
where this container one wants to talk to container two, they go through the local host. Let's just assume that now we have more pods and each pod has its own IP address. And the way these pods communicate with each other is normally through a bridge. It's not the only way you can use IP tables depending on the CNI uh, provider. But let's say in this case, we use a bridge. So all these pods, if they, this pod wants to communicate to this pod, it goes through the bridge. The same thing if this pod wants to communicate to this pod, it goes through the bridge and so on. And then the bridge also connected to the um, interface of the uh, node so they can communicate to outside world if need to. Let's assume that we have two nodes and we have the same pods replicated across these two nodes. And again, the pods on the same host, on host two, when they want to communicate with each other, they go through the bridge. However, if they want to communicate to pods on the other node, it usually goes through an overlay network. So overlay network um, basically it hides complexity of uh, networking between these two pods and gives an appearance that, that um, these uh, networks and these nodes and pods are on the same network. The kind of simplified networking. Now that we understand a little bit about network, Kubernetes networking, let's talk about container network interface or CNI. So CNI is an open source project managed by Cloud Native Computing Foundation. And the goal of this project is to provide specification and libraries for writing plugins to configure network interfaces in Linux containers along with a number of supported plugins. So the CNI concerns itself only with network connectivity of containers and removing allocated resources when the container is, is deleted. So if you watched uh, my previous um, presentation on container networking, we actually created by hand, we created the, the, the container network interfaces, the bridges, and also we set up manually a tunnel between uh, nodes. So that we did that by hand. And this net, the CNI actually automated all of that. So we don't have to do that by hand. I just did that to show you how um, networking actually works in CNI. So CNI actually provides those services that we looked at in the previous uh, episode of uh, demos. But so CNI provides that functionality um, for creating container networking. And that's what Kubernetes actually takes advantage of CNI. So CNI, Kubernetes actually does not manage the Kubernetes uh, pod networking, and that's all managed through CNI uh, plugins. There are various plugins, such as Flannel that we look at today, and also uh, Calico that we will look at later. And by no means Kubernetes is the only one which takes advantage of CNI. Uh, other providers such as uh, Cloud Foundry, Podman, and CRIO also uh, leverage CNI. When you install Kubernetes, you have to install a CNI plugins. And there are a number of them that you can select from. Flannel is the oldest and simplest one and it is appropriate to be used in small to medium sized Kubernetes clusters where all the nodes are in the same, same subnet. Each node manages the pod subnet and allocates pod uh, IPs locally. So basically, Flannel assigns a block of IPs to each node, and then when the, a pod is created on, on a particular node, um, an IP from that block of IPs is chosen for that uh, pod and is assigned to it. Pods on, when pods are on the same uh, node, they're actually uh, connected through a bridge. So that's point number two, pods on the same pod node are connected through layer two bridge. When pods are on a different, like a one, a pod from one node wants to communicate with a pod on another node. By default, 
Encapsulation for Fernalol is virtual extension LAN or VXLAN. Basically, what it means is it wraps a layer to Ethernet packet inside a UTP packet. So in that sense, it creates a UTP tunnel overlaying the existing underlying network to connect pods on different nodes. And we will see that pictorially next. So let's explore pictorially how Flannel works. So as you can see, we have two nodes. When we have a master and node one. And on each node, as you can see, the pods have their own IP addresses and communication between the pods on the same node goes through the bridge. Same thing over here, same thing over here. So as long as <clears throat> pods are communicating on the same network, they don't really have to cross uh, nodes. So the, bri uh, the bridge on each node uh, performs that function. However, let's say this pod on this node wants to communicate with that pod on the other node. And that's where <clears throat> Flannel actually creates a, a new interface. It's called Flannel 1 on each node. And the communication, like from this guy, goes through the bridge, comes to Flannel 1, then flows through the default uh, node interface. And then Flannel sets up a VXLAN, basically set up a UDP tunnel between these two nodes. And that's how communication happens. And inside that message, basically, it includes an Ethernet uh, frame. Ethernet frame basically has the destination and the source IP address, the data, and so some more, some other information. So that header, that uh, Ethernet frame, is really shows what goes generally between these two. So inside that, it actually encapsulates everything, all the communication between these two. So when you call like this, call a service on the other side, which happens to answered by one of these. Um, pods, all the communication, such as IP communication, um, Ethernet communication, everything is contained here. And that's the whole package is sent from one node to the other. And then over here is kind of disassemble, finds which node, uh, which pod it has, is supposed to go. Then the, this service, for instance, on, on this node, uh, performs what it's supposed to do, and the results, again, sent back uh, as a UDP uh, tunnel, in, through the UDP tunnel um, as Ethernet, and then go back to node one, and then again, this assembled. So it's, it's, it's a little bit complicated, and in the demo next, uh, we'll go through that, and you can see the layer of abstraction that uh, Naval uh, creates. <clears throat> Demo time. So in this section, we will verify um, what we learned so far. Um, let me talk about our setup. So I have this coordinated cluster here. <clears throat> there are two nodes, master and node one. And I've used a uh, flannel uh, for the CNI uh, plugin. If you are new to Kubernetes and you want to know how to set a cluster up, uh, make sure to check out check out my um, course on setting up a multi-node uh, Kubernetes cluster on CentOS 8. The, and then the only difference that is in the, on that node on that course, I use uh, Calico for the CNI, and this one I use Flannel. But steps are exactly the same. So if you want to follow that to set up your cluster, welcome to do so. And then you can either use uh, Flannel or, um, or, or Calico. So today uh, I'll cover uh, Flannel and then I'll cover Calico in a future presentation. But the, the end result is the same. You'll have a functioning uh, cluster setup. So uh, what we want to do is verify that uh, we have these interfaces, um, VETs. So remember, VET comes into uh, in pairs. So one would be installed here and one part installed there. So we'll verify those. We verify our bridge here, verify our final one interface. 
And then we also take a look at the route that CNI creates on this node. So let's go one step at a time. So the first command is IP link show type width. So basically we are telling the OS, uh, let's show us uh, the bed set or virtual internet set. So let's run that. As you can see, uh, one is VET0 FC62229, which is this guy. Okay, so that's verified. And the other one is VET CH900 F69, which is this guy. So these two are verified. So let's just clear that. Next is, uh, we will take a look at, at the bridges that are on that node. So the command is IP link show type bridge. So let's run that. As you can see, there's a number of, and there are a number of bridges. Uh, some of them are not being used, like this guy, verb zero or Docker is not being used. The one that we are interested is the CNI zero. So we can verify that there's a um, bridge called CNI and the status is up, so this guy here, so that's gonna, that's also verified. So let's clear that. We can also clear, uh, we can also um, verify what um, interfaces are attached to CNI zero. So let's run that. As you can see, no surprise here, this guy and this guy are both attached to CNI zero. So CNI zero, CNI zero. So this is the other kind of verifying that these two are indeed, these two interfaces are attached to our CNI. The vet, those vets are attached to CNI zero. So let's say clear that. Next thing is <coughs> verify that these two um, pods, we can verify their IP addresses and those are, uh, let's, let's run that. So the command is, kubectl get pods minus o wide. So basically minus o wide means give us more information. And part of information in that gives us is the IP addresses of those pods. And we are only interested uh, on this node. So that's why we're grabbing it with cube node uh, one. So let's run that. As you can see, there are two um, pods here. And one is IP address is 10.24418, which is this guy. And the other one is 10.4419, which is this guy. So as you can see, so these, uh, as you can see, again, these are uh, comps in pairs. So these are virtual internet. One is when CNI creates that, one is attached to CNI, to the bridge, and the other one to um, the pod. So let's run, let's clear that. Now let's take a look at our route. So let me, IP route, that will show us the routes that uh, packets will take. So let's go one by one. So the default route is through 192.168.01. So I have, so these are all running my um, servers, all running in, inside, uh, inside uh, Hyper-V. And the Hyper-V switch is 192.168.01. So basically anything that goes outside my cluster uh, goes through that uh, 192.168.01. Next one is 10.0, uh, 10.244.00-24. So any communication that goes to that subnet, so this is basically this. So anything that goes cross from this uh, node to the other node, goes to the other pods there, it goes through uh, flannel one. So anything that kind of has to traverse from this side to the other side goes through flannel one, then it goes through the tunnel. The, the tunnel is not shown here, we'll discuss that later, but eventually uh, the communication goes from like this guy wants to call this guy, goes through the uh, CNI zero, then through flannel one and then flows through the tunnel on the other side. Now, anything that goes to 10.244.1.0, so that is the subnet of these uh, pods and the bridge here, they go through this bridge. So 10. Dot, it goes through the CNI01. So anything that uh, internal communication as we discussed during the presentation 
between these pods on the same node goes through the CNI0, and that's going to verify it's here. And Docker is not being used, so let's skip that. And then the last one of interest is anything that goes to 192.168.00. So anything that goes from one server to uh, one. So all the communication between this node and all other servers that are inside my um, cluster in Hyper-V, they go through uh, Ethernet zero. That makes sense. So all the communication that goes between nodes has to go through um, Ethernet zero. So this is uh, kind of showing you uh, how these are set up. Um, next, we were going to actually now concentrate on the, the tunnel and see what traffic actually goes through the tunnel. So in this section of the demo, we are going to see what's actually, uh, what actually goes over the wire through the tunnel from one pod to the other. When, when a pod calls another pod, and a, a service on another part on the different server. So again, to remind us, this is our setup. Let's just bring it up here. So we have two servers, master and node one, and we have two pods on each, and each um, is service, it's hosting a service. So if you run this kubectl get pods minus o wide, again, that will gives us the list of um, the nodes, the, the pods that are running and on which node and the IP address. So basically this gives us this information. We got four pods, uh, two on each node, and it gives us the IP address of each one of those um, pods. So let me clear this. Next we are going to, to look at our service. So kubectl got, get services. And I have installed a very simple um, service called Hello World. And these are the details of the service. Let's take a look. And this is the name of the service. The type, um, node port means that we are able to reach to the service from outside the cluster. And cluster IP, so this is HTTP, it runs on port 80. If we, from inside the, the cluster, we can call this uh, the service through this IP address, and it runs on port 80. Um, we can also reach a service from outside, uh, from inside the cluster through its uh, directly calling the uh, the pod through this uh, port 8080. And this is the um, IP address of the node port 30115. So we can actually call the service from outside the cluster using one of the nodes. So I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, this is, uh, we, we're calling the service through the cluster. Let me first clear this. So let's test the service. curl HTTP 192.168.0.30. And this is the port number, uh, the node port port number, 30115. So again, we take, take a look at the diagram. 192.168.0.30. So that is the IP address of the master. So if you run that, it could be another, uh, the other uh, node, you can use either node. So this is the result that comes back, basically says hello world, the version number, and the host, basically the pod, pod that is running on. So when you call the, uh, the node port, it kind of load balances between these four IPs, and then one of them is selected, and then that's where the result. So um, we can also go directly against a single um, pod. Let me just clear that. So if we do that, we run that. Again, we get the same result. So let's uh, take a look at the diagram again. So we're calling 10.244.0.14. So that is this guy. And then and the port number is 8080. So we get the same exact same result back. So let's just clear that. Now uh, let's actually SSH into SSH into one of the pods. And then from that pod, then we can call a service and then we can see what's going on behind the scene. So uh, the command is cube um, CTL exec minus IT. This is the name of the 
uh, one of the um, pods that we selected. And this is the command. So basically we are saying we want to, so kubectl exec minus it means that we are going to run a command <coughs> um, interactively on a pod. This is a pod name. And this dash dash means the follow the command follows the dash dash basically what command we're going to run that sh so basically we are going to sh that to that um, pod so we do that you get the prompt now we are actually inside the pod so the the goal is to call um, from one node to the other so we're going to call from this guy we're going to call uh, from this pod the service on that part directly on that part. So again, we're going through the tunnel and that's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to monitor what's going on um, between these two. So, let, so this is the command. So curl HTTP, that's the IP address of the pod on the other node, 8080. So before running that, I'm going to run T Shark. So T Shark is the command line version of Wireshark. And that is used extensively to monitor uh, what um, the packets that that travel um, over a network. So let's just go through that. T shark minus v means that we want to uh, verbose. Uh, if we don't specify minus v, it only show, show us very um, not detailed information. That's what we don't want. Uh, minus i means which interface we are going to run on, and that is we are going to um, on the uh, deep, uh, on the interface of the server. So let's just pick up the line here. So we're going to for master, we're going to run monitor on this uh, network interface if at zero. So that's what it means. Minus d port. So what it means is uh, what what to actually monitor. So it says anything that runs on port a uh, UDP port eight four seven two. It's in, interpret that VXLAN. Um, T Shark knows about VXLAN, and that's when we specify that. It interprets everything that coming from 8472 as VXLAN and it displays the information. And minus F port 8472 uh, means we are only interested in port 8472. So what is F4472? This is a tunnel between these two is a UDP and the UDP port that establishes between these two is 8472. So we run that start monitoring so now from here when we run um basically when we call the service you'll see that it's capturing all the uh, information i'll just stop that so again let's uh, kind of remind us what we are doing what we did was we called one service from this um no from this uh, pod uh, on the other pod which is on the other server uh, node so uh, so the, the the traffic is going to udp so we're going to kind of interpret what's going on and that is the t shark now gives us information of what is going on so let's go from the beginning okay so first of all is uh, frame one within frame one so that's the author part of the frame let me just we are done with here. I'm going to maximize this just so you can see it better. Within that frame, we have Ethernet. We have the source. So this is the um, the MAC address of the source, and this is the destination source. So what source we are talking about? So we are calling from this so this is the, the mac address of this is the source and the mac address of this is the destination because our source is here and destination here so that's what those means and then within that um, ethernet um, frame we also have protocol ip 
because UDP uses IP protocol, and that's the the the, the IP part of the the call. And the the source is 192.168.031, again, which is the IP address of this uh, interface. And the destination is 192.168.0.30. And so that is the uh, destination of this. So within that uh, um, Ethernet packet, now we have an IP packet inside it. And then the next section is information on user data protocol or UDP. And the port, the destination port is 8472. That's what we kind of talked about a little bit earlier. So again, this, you know, you're now looking at this UDP, uh, which is listening on um, port, uh, on this part is 8472. And the source part from this, any, it, it just picks up a, a random port and then calls 8472. So now we are, um, and then the next part of this in, uh, packet is the virtual ex, um, extensible local area network or uh, VSLAN. So this information, the following information are VXLAN. And then within that, now there's another Ethernet packet. And the source is one. So this is the, uh, the MAC address of the source. So let's just come back here. Now we are here. So this is the, this is the MAC address of this interface. And the destination is a MAC address of this guy. So these are the two source and destination uh, of the, these two uh, interfaces. And then within that, because now we are calling a web service, so we're calling a web service from one part, which is hosted on the other part. So again, because that's the TCP protocol then uh, is wrapped in, inside an IP um, packet. So that's, that's what it is. And then um, the source again, uh, source is 110.244.10. So here, um, so this is the source. So the reason why, because we're calling from this, you might wondering why is it the source is this guy here. So on the way out, this is actually um, impersonate this IP address and then calls the other service. And the destination is 10.244. Dot zero dot 14. So this is the source. So as far as this part of the world is concerned, the information, the, the call is coming from, uh, from this interface. And then on the way back, it knows how to route the data to, um, to the caller here. So when we are calling from one server to the other, it actually goes through this interface and that's where you kind of masquerade the IP address of that. So that's, that's how uh, we see the different IP address. And, but the destination is the same, it's 10.244.0.14. Um, so again, the rest of this is the um, kind of handshaking. And um, here we see that the this TCP part, the port is 8080, that's what the service is hosting on. And again, uh, some handshaking was going on here. So there's a lot of information going on between the two. And eventually, now we get to the, to the other part. Now we have inside frame two. Now we are now, now this, the call was made here. Now from this point on, the service will respond. And again, the data will be wrapped again in another uh, UDP panel, a UDP uh, frame. And then it is the reverse. So basically now the data is sent through um, this flannel here, goes through the UDP, and then it goes back to um, pod, the pod that called it. So there's a lot of information here. So that's basically the gist of it. So we have a lot of layers of kind of UDP, uh, of Ethernet, then IP, then, you know, you got another UDP file. But all of that, it really helps very seamlessly, you don't have to do anything. It does the work for us. Um, so that's part of, that's the uh, kind of demo part of the, 
of this presentation. I hope it made sense. If you have any question, uh, just put it in the chat window and uh, um, I will definitely try to answer those questions. In this video, we covered the following. Overview of Kubernetes networking model. General overview of pod networking. We discussed CNI, Container Network Interface. What is it for? And then we looked at deep dive discussion on a, a flannel CNI. Well, thank you very much for your time. And I hope that you'll join me in my future videos. Uh, these are a list of my previous videos. If you're interested, please go ahead and watch them. If you have any questions, please, um, about any of these videos, please make sure you uh, put your questions or comments and I will definitely um, respond. Thank you again. If you enjoyed watching these, uh, please give it a like. Thank you.